Well, the Democrats are having chronic meltdowns and have entered crazy, deranged territory as they struggle to keep their cool because Biden's cognitive decline is becoming harder than ever to defend. Here is Democrat Representative Deborah Dingell short-circuiting on live TV when asked about Sleepy Joe's capability. I do just want to ask you again if you think President Biden is the strongest person at the top of the ticket to win Michigan in the fall. It He's the candidate right now. And these are do you beat your wife kind of questions. Do you beat your wife kind of questions? Wow. And you know you have a big problem when your own party refuses to back you. Here is Democrat Senator John Hickenlooper, who refuses multiple times to say whether he backs Biden as their nominee. Do you think President Biden can win in 2024? You know, I'm holding off on that whole discussion. There's... Uh, let's get NATO done. I mean, are you waiting to see his performance at the press conference tomorrow to make a decision? Well, I'm watching, but um, I'm going to hold off on having the discussion. And even Nancy Pelosi has cracked. I'm not going to make any comments in the hallway about the fate of our nation. Okay. Do you believe you should run for election? I'm not. Am I speaking English to you? I'm not going to be making any statements about any of that right now in the hallway. Joining me now is filmmaker and journalist Army Horowitz. Army, thanks for joining us. Look, the Democrats are obviously, clearly, in acute crisis mode. Oh, yeah, they're in bad shape. Uh, you know, look, I don't want to say shut and fried, but, yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> By the way, for the record, I don't be my wife. Um, look... <laughs> Uh, this is all insanity, and it's what's amazing. I'll tell you what I, the takeaway for me is, is that Trump is able to control himself and not go nuts on this. He is letting this all play out. Look, when your opponent is self-imploding, you just let it happen and don't interfere. And that's what he's doing. All the Republicans and the Trump, and the Trump campaign have to do when it comes to running ads is just run the ads of Democrats saying, we don't want him running. The New York Times saying, you got to step down. George Clooney, his best buddy, saying you should stop running. Like, that's all. They're, they're writing the ads for the Republican Party themselves. That's what they have to do. I mean, it's total insanity. And look, the polls are becoming clearer and clearer. They are showing that not only is he increasing his leads in the battleground states, right, the, the, the blue wall, the man, they are tied in Virginia. The Republicans haven't won the Virginia in decades. Minnesota has now moved pretty much to a toss-up state, almost with a margin of error. That's been 50 years since they won Minnesota. Uh, everything is moving in Trump's direction. And to Trump's credit, old Trump would have gotten involved and in front of this. New Trump is letting it all happen. I want to point one last thing out that I noticed during Biden's interview that people haven't picked up on. So I heard Biden... He recently just spoke at a union today. I had to I had to keep continuing raising the volume on my TV because I couldn't hear the man. But the one thing I noticed about his interview with ABC, with George Stephanopoulos, is that if you listen to the interview, the ambient sound was very, very loud. As somebody who's in the film business, who edits, what I understood was that they had to keep doubling his sound in post in order to hear what he was saying. Look. It is unbelievable what's unfolding in front of our eyes. And to Trump's credit, he's sitting back and letting it happen. Oh, he's, he's watching it all uh, like a car crash in slow motion. But it's interesting you mentioned that because he, uh, Biden's got this creepy, weird whisper about him. No wonder they have to boost his volume. And look, the Democrats, they're really getting increasingly desperate. Democratic Representative Ted Lieu was clutching at straws when he made this claim about Donald Trump and the Epstein files. But something I've heard that doesn't seem to be being covered are the Epstein files. These files were released, and, like, Donald Trump's sort of all over this, right? There are pictures of him with Jeffrey Epstein. He's taken multiple plane flights with Epstein with young girls on board. Uh, he is on call logs with Epstein. One of the highest trending hashtags on t Twitter right now is about Trump and Epstein. I'm not going to repeat the hashtag because we're in a dignified setting. But, yeah, y'all might want to look at that because that's highly disturbing. And, again, it shows that Donald Trump is unfit for office.
Even Snopes, a left-leaning publication, has debunked these kinds of claims, saying no evidence supports the claim that Trump has paid upwards of $35 million to silence accusations that he raped several children ranging in age from 10 to 13. Army, do you think the Democrats are now really grappling at straws? Look, I mean, they're desperate to move the attention away from Joe Biden's uh, meltdown. Uh, so, yeah, of course, they're grasping straws. But I think they have to be a little bit careful with that particular accusation, considering that Bill Clinton was really heavily involved with Jeff Epstein. I think that might be a mistake. But look, you're not going to win any point. Trump's creep factor is already very clear. We know Trump is kind of a creepy dude, uh, kind of a weird dude. We know he a lot of sexual allegations against him. This is not new. This is all baked in. You're not going to gain anything from it. But you are going to move the spotlight back to your creepy former Democratic president, uh, Bill Clinton. So it's probably not the smartest move in the world, to be honest. Oh, fair, fair call. Now, have a look at this vision of Joe Biden appearing to sleepwalk, but this time on the global stage. Here he was uh, on stage at the NATO summit in Washington. You can see him there. He goes into the middle. I don't know where I am. Where am I? Who are all these people? He really has absolutely no idea where he is. And then uh, have a look at this second uh, clip here as Canadian PM Justin Trudeau walked on stage. Look at Joe Biden. He looked at him as though, well, is this the first time we've met? I don't know you. With the usual <laughs> uh, creepy mouth open, stunned, strung out stance. And then unfortunately, Army Joe Biden did start speaking. The fact is that so many of my, my uh, let me put it this way, I'm very pleased that today... Uh... You know, Army, this is NATO. It's an important global summit. And this is apparently the president of the free world who needs to be in bed. Is it embarrassing to have him represent America in front of world leaders like this? Uh, yes. <laughs> is, that, is that enough of an answer? Do I have to keep going on? Uh, <laughs> yes, it's embarrassing. Look, it's, it's not so... OK, we understand that he, he is in serious physical and mental decline... That is what it is. I, I think a, maybe a bigger problem is how he's approaching NATO itself, the things that he's saying. First of all, in the George Stephanopoulos interview, he said we beat Putin. Like, did we, though? I, I'm not sure we did. Because if we did, he's making the argument that we no longer have to defend Ukraine, right? So there's real geopolitical issues when he says things like that. But I think the most egregious is when he tries to take credit for NATO paying up. Uh, yeah, NATO has paid a lot more over the last few years because of, uh, 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 of President Trump. Look, uh, uh, Biden was vice president with Obama for eight years. And there was they, all these problems we had with NATO members not paying their 2% of their GDP toward defense budget was happening through that entire eight-year process. It only began raising during Trump because he played chicken with NATO, right? Everybody's talking about how he wants to disband NATO. At the end of the day, we know what that is now. That was a tactical negotiation that worked. They ended up paying their fair share. And it took time. It took a couple of years for it to happen. So he's now taking credit for what Trump did. That, I think, is an even bigger problem.